Hello there, fellow pilots. My name is Paul Mannion. I'm a designated pilot examiner. I'd like to spend a few minutes today giving you a little bit of insight into the process of taking a check ride. We understand that for many of you, this will be the first time that you've taken a check ride, and it may seem like kind of a mysterious process. So we'd like to help you with that so that you can prepare well and be comfortable on the day of your check ride. So spend a few minutes watching the video. It should help give you a little bit more confidence as you go through the process and best of luck on your check ride. Fly safely. Hi. Hello. Hi, I'm John. Hi, John. Nice to meet you. I'm Paul. Um, I'm here to take the check ride. I'm taking it pretty soon. Okay. Um, I heard you're a designated pilot examiner. That's correct. Um, I have a few questions to ask. Um, do you have a second? Sure. Have a seat. How, how can I help you? All right, so my first question is, how should I dress? Well, you want to be neat and clean. Okay. Uh, there's no need for you to overdress. Certainly don't need to come in in a suit and tie or anything like that. All right. uh, just dress, uh, you probably could call it business casual. As I said, neat and clean. But you want to be comfortable as well. Sometimes, especially in the summertime, the airplanes can get pretty warm, and we certainly realize that. So we want you to be comfortable. Okay. All right, now my second question is, what can I do on the day of the check ride to make things go as smoothly as possible? Well, good preparation is the key. You know, there's a, a lot of information that we have to cover and with, there's a lot of paperwork that we have to do. So if you can get to the office early and have all your paperwork laid out and have everything marked in your logbook so that we can find that easily, have things marked in your maintenance logs so that they're easy to find. That will go a long ways towards uh, um, making things go more smoothly. Also, don't remember, uh, don't forget that you need to submit your application on IACRA, and you'll need to have your FTM number as well as your username and password because we'll have to go into IACRA and call up your application. Uh, that's the basis for the, the paperwork that we're going to do. Um, I know it's a lot of information to try to remember, but in the Airman Certification Standards, they have a nice checklist here for you to use. Okay. So you can go through that, and that will help you remember to bring everything that you're going to need. All right. Okay. Um, my next question is, um, how long should each ex explanation be? Well, that's a good question. Obviously, the length of your explanation is going to vary by the type of question that you get asked. Um, one thing to remember about these check rides is that it's not necessarily a question-answer, question-answer. It's more of a discussion between two pilots. So I will give you some topics to discuss, and you will just talk to me about them just as you would as if you were um, a fully certificated pilot and you were going to be making a, a flight, you would talk me through everything that you would do to prepare for that flight. So the best answer I could give you to that question is give a complete answer, and that's, that's the end of that particular discussion. If there's any further information I need to know about that, um, I can prompt you for it. But in general, you should be leading a discussion as opposed to just answering a question. Okay. Um, what if I don't remember to answer a question? Or what if I don't remember the answer to a question? Well, that's very common. As I said, there's a lot of information for you to try to remember. But... The good news is that we have a lot of resources that we can go to in order to find those answers. You might want to bring your uh, textbook with you, maybe your pilot's operating handbook for the airplane that you're going to fly, and most certainly you're going to want to bring your FAR handbook. Um, make sure that you have a current edition, okay? because I think there's a pretty good chance that there will be some subjects that come up that you may not remember the complete answer and you'll be able to look up the answer. And the important thing that we look for is that you know where to go to look up an answer. All right. Um, 
I'm a little bit nervous tonight right now. Are people generally nervous? Absolutely. I think everybody is, is nervous before they take a check ride. It's just a natural reaction. Um, one thing that I like to tell applicants is that as even as an examiner, I have to take a check ride and I have to be observed administering a check ride once a year. And I'm nervous just like the applicants are. So that's a perfectly normal reaction. Um, the best thing to do is to remember that we're here to make sure that you're safe. We, we're, we're certainly not here to try to make you fail. We're here to make sure that you're going to be a safe pilot. So good preparation is the key. And what I would suggest you do is spend some time either with your instructor or a fellow student or maybe another pilot and get some practice discussing this, this different subject areas that you know that you're going to get asked about. So it's, it's one thing to pick a choice out of a multiple choice question or to read a study guide where you just say, okay, I understand that. It can be a little bit more difficult to have to lead a discussion on a certain subject. So if you spend some time with someone else and you've practiced that discussion, mm -hmm. that will help settle your nerves a lot on the day of the check ride because you know already that you have all the information and you've practiced it and now you're just showing the examiner that you have all the appropriate information. Okay. Um, how do you determine um, what consists of a pass or a fail? Well, we have the Airman Certification Standards that's published by the FAA. Okay. And the good news for you as an applicant is that this is the test that you are going to take. Okay. So you already know ahead of time pretty much everything that you're going to get asked to do. Okay. And in the Airman Certification Standards, the FAA also tells us as examiners what the uh, standards are for every maneuver that you're going to do on your flight. Uh, typically, it's a range of headings and altitudes and airspeeds. So what we're looking for is that you meet the parameters that they set forth in the certification standards. Um, one thing to remember is that a failure consists of a situation where you consistently exceed standards. So the good news for you as the applicant is to know that if you momentarily exceed a standard and you take prompt action to correct it, that generally is acceptable. The, the, the failure comes in when you repeatedly um, exceed the standards or you exceed the standards and don't take any corrective action. Okay. Okay. And one thing I, I would like to mention about the flight is that during the flight, when you've completed a maneuver, and you've done it to the best of your ability, forget about it. And the reason I say that is that your focus needs to be on the tasks that are coming up ahead of you as opposed to what you've already done. Um, once you've done a maneuver, you are not allowed to repeat it, so you really can't change the outcome of what's already happened. So we don't want people to be stressed out or distracted by thinking about what they've already done we want them to focus on the next thing that they have to do. Okay. And um, I, I think probably the question that you were trying to get at is, if I do fail, what's the next step that I have to take? And it's, it's really a fairly straightforward process. You go back to your instructor. He gives you some remedial training on the area that you had the problem with. And you come back and we repeat that particular area. So. Generally, when you come back for the retest, the focus is on that particular area that you had the problem with. You've received some training, so you'll probably do it much better on the retest. And at that point, you get a temporary certificate, and you're a fully certificated pilot. And the nice thing about that is that you and I and the FAA are the only ones that will know that you had a problem with your original test. Okay. okay? Um, when you get your certificate, it'll be exactly the same certificate as the guy that passed on the first try. All right.
So we're going to do this proposed cross-country flight today. And obviously, weather is always an important consideration for us as pilots. What can you tell me about the weather for this cross-country today? Well, I've checked the official aviation website, and I also called uh, Fly Service. Okay. And I saw that there's going to be an area of high pressure to the northwest, and it will be keeping. There will be uh, clear skies with a northeast wind, approximately 10 knots. Okay. We should expect broken clouds at about 5,000 feet. Okay. Hey, Matt. Oh, nothing much, just at uh, flight school. Uh, sure, yeah. I'll be down there at, oh, I don't know, probably 20 minutes. It shouldn't take very long. Okay. All right, see you then. Okay, bye. Class B airspace is the busiest airspace, generally around the busiest airports like Chicago, Detroit, Cleveland, Atlanta, Los Angeles, San Francisco, Philadelphia, um, Memphis, <sighs> any of those really. Oh, it's kind of warm out there today. You look a little warm in your coat and tie. Why don't you go ahead and take your suit coat and your tie off and you'll be a little more comfortable. Yeah, sure thing. Okay, you're going to I'm John. Hi, John. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, too. So, I understand that you're here for a private pilot check ride today. Uh-huh. Good. Have you and your instructor spent a good amount of time uh, preparing for the check ride? Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. And do you feel like you're pretty well prepared? Oh, yeah. Definitely. Oh, okay. Well, well I guess we'll find out today. Mm -hmm. All right. So, uh, how many hours of time do you have? Um, around 50, 60, maybe even 70, somewhere around there. Oh, um, well, can we take a look at your logbook to verify that? Oh, yeah, sure thing. Okay. Here it is. Oh, okay, good. Here we go. Well, let's take a look and see what you have. So for the, the first thing I need to ask you to see is your student pilot certificate. Sure thing. Here it is. Oh, okay, good. All right, looks like that looks good. Uh, how about your medical certificate? Do you have that with you? I think so. Let me find it. Well, I see according to your logbook here, you only have 39 and a half hours. Oh. Uh, were you aware that you needed 40 hours? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm going to have to have you uh, go back and talk to your instructor about that. And you can give me a call when you get a sufficient number of hours so that you can complete all the requirements. All right, yeah, that's cool. Okay. So have you and your instructor spent some time going through your logbook, making sure that you've fulfilled all the requirements for the check ride? Oh, yes. Here, would you like me to show you? Yeah, sure. Okay. So I have 40 hours total time um, okay. 11 hours solo. Okay. And over here are my cross country flights solo. Um, and over here I have my. I see, I see you went to Port Meadville. Did you go to the, uh, the famous hot dog stand? Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. good. Good for you. All right. And then I did my uh, three hours night flight, um, night cross country, 10 full stop landings. I did three hours of simulated instrument flight, and finally three hours in preparation for my... Okay, uh, I also need to see your student pilot certificate. Okay, there you go. Okay, all right, that looks good. And your medical certificate, there you go. Right, a second class medical, good. All right, 
And uh, did you bring the maintenance logs for the airplane? Oh, yes. Here you go. Okay, good. Uh, we'll spend some time going through these in a few minutes. All right. Okay, good. Okay. Alright, um, you'll have to wear your seatbelt the entire flight. Do you know how to use it? I know how to use my seatbelt. Alright, the emergency exits are right here to uh, open them. You just need to lift the black leather and slide your seat out of the back. And while we're, while we're taxiing and during takeoff and landing, um, you need to keep the stereo cockpit, which means no talking. No, asking it. no um, unnecessary talking. Okay, I can do that. Okay, well, John, you did a nice job on your check ride. Congratulations, you are now officially a licensed pilot. So, how do you feel? I feel pretty good. Training was a lot of fun. Um, I learned a lot, met a lot of new people, and um, I'm excited to use my pilot, pilot's license. Good, well, we're glad you are part of the pilot community now. So. One thing I like to remind people of is that, you know, as I said, you did a nice job on your check ride. Um, but think of your license as being a license to learn. There's always new things to do, new skills to work on, skills to improve upon. And I would strongly encourage you to continue to work on uh, your skills so that you keep them sharp and keep them safe. There's more ratings that you might like to go for an instrument rating or if you want a really fun one, a seaplane rating is really a lot of fun. Okay. So um, once again, congratulations. Thanks a lot. Look forward to seeing you around and right. uh, fly safely. All right. Thanks a lot. You're welcome.